So, recently on my Instagram, a debate popped up in the comments section about the crew of an Oberth class and how they would get to the secondary hull. Now, if you did not know, Starship Reviews is on Instagram and has awesome followers, which you could be one of, assuming you aren't already. There are many reasons why my followers and subscribers are amazing, but the random questions they ask about the day-to-day -day realities of science fiction starships and how you live on them are easily in my, my top 10 reasons as to why they are amazing. Now, throughout the comments on the post in question, many people had their own ideas about how and even if a crew would need to enter into the secondary hull of an Oberth. And I thought I would make a quick video exploring some of the more common theories while also explaining why this is such a big issue. Now, the first thing we must work out is how big the Oberth class ship is. Officially, the vessel has a length of 120 meters. At this official length, the ship's saucer would have just two decks of two meters of height. Hardly enough room, it seems, for a crew of 80, an apparent shuttle bay at the leading edge of the saucer, cargo bay, bridge, scientific facilities, and engineering spaces. The two decks is based on the twin rows of windows on the USS Grisholm studio model. However, throughout the life of the model, the ship was portrayed at various different sizes, with the ship apparently measuring in at over 350 meters long in some scenes. And several MFDs we see in the show also show several different internal deck arrangements that conflict with one another. Crucially, for our discussion today, at the cannon length of 120 meters long, the Oberth class would have the two pylons connecting the saucer and the nacelles to the canoe-like secondary hull at just 1.8 meters wide. Far too thin, thin to fit a standard turbolift pod, and also too thin to fit a typical stairwell. Meaning that the only way to get between the two parts in this cannon length would be via a ladder, a long and laborious process both ways. Now, the next issue is that the two necks on the Oberth class stretch across several decks, three to four in my estimation. Given that a typical deck on a Starfleet ship measures roughly 23 meters tall, that would be a climb on a ladder of between nine and 12 meters. Hardly an impossible distance to climb, but still a tiring trip if you had to make it regularly. And this issue becomes larger if you consider the Oberth to be a bigger ship than its cannon dimensions. At this official length, and because the latter is the most practical means of traveling between the two sections on an Oberth, despite the distance he must climb, this would suggest to me that the secondary hull contains only systems that do not require a constant crew presence, such as sensors, meaning that crews would seldom visit that section. This thinness of the neck becomes less of an issue if the ship is scaled up, with various fans suggesting lengths varying from 150, 180, all the way up to 250 meters. Personally, I prefer to think of the ship more along the lines of 200 meters as a sort of middle ground between these various suggestions. In the form of several master systems displays we see throughout the show, we get a few good looks at the internal arrangement of the Oberth class. Unfortunately, these plans are inconsistent, both between themselves and each other. Showing decks that would be just a meter tall at the 120 meter length of the hull, and also showing ship systems in the secondary hull. Now, due to the inconsistencies in the plans we see, I tend not to treat them as a reliable source. However, if nothing else, this highlights the issues regarding the size of the ship. In my own headcanon, the Oberth is larger than its canonical length, measuring in at a whopping 200 meters even. This permits a much increased internal volume for the hull to fit everything a ship would need. Cargo bays, shuttle bays, science labs, crew quarters, a reactor, life support, and other miscellaneous bits. The 200 meter length would permit a lift to connect the two halves of the ship, one in each neck in all likelihood. However, the secondary hull would contain mostly technology that did not require frequent visits from the ship's crew, with systems such as a deflector array, 
probe launcher and the primary sensor arrays for the ship being located here. Perhaps some science labs would also be found there uh, in this section. I imagine the entire hull is detachable from the main ship, with the Oberth capable of operating without the lower hull with no difficulty. In this sense, the lower hull is analogous to the systems pod seen in the later Nebula class, being able to be swapped out to allow the ship to undertake a variety of different scientific missions on short notice as needed. Now, I do not think the Oberth is large enough to act in a manner similar to the earlier Ptolemy-class tug, carrying a different cargo modules below the saucer section at warp. The ship is just too small to carry much freight in this manner. However, there do exist numerous different models of the lower hull to allow the ship to serve in many different roles. The Oberth would be capable of serving in addition to its usual science ship configuration as a transport, medical vessel, antimatter transport ship, and communications vessel, making it a highly versatile design which may explain all the ships we see in the next generation. I feel like this increased length works well for the ship at its current length, as it just feels too small to me. Let me know what you think of this, as this is just my own theory. So there we have the issues surrounding the Oberth, a surprisingly problem-plagued design for such a small class. And we also have my own theory about how to resolve the issues with the class's size and how a crewman would reach the lower portions of the design. Let me know what you think of my theory in the comments below, and also follow the link in the description of this video to an article from the excellent Ex Astra Scientia website where I got a lot of the information for this video.